Hello everyone, today we'll be looking at the basic features of the Python matplotlib library. By the end of this video you'll be able to create a variety of line graphs, such as the one on the screen right now, which is actually the one we'll be making in this tutorial. Before we start, please remember to like, subscribe, hit the bell, and also check out my other social media for updates on the projects I'm currently working on. Links are in the description. Matplotlib is a Python library that's used to create visualizations and plot data on a variety of different graphs. Matplotlib is a data visualization library, and so it's used to plot important data Data on a graph to get a visual image of patterns in the data or to see how data has changed over time. For the purpose of this video, we'll be looking at the amount of girls that have rejected me in 2022. I'll be assuming you already know a bit of Python. If not, I'll link a tutorial to Python at the top right of the screen and in the description. We first of all need to install matplotlib. We can do this in a command prompt or terminal and we can type pip install matplotlib. Press enter and wait for the installation to complete. We can go back to our program. I'll be using Visual Studio Code as my text editor. In here, we can import the library by typing from matplotlib import pyplot as plt. We'll only be working with pyplot. The basic idea with plotting on graphs is that you need values for the y-axis and then you need values for the x-axis. The values will be represented as Python lists and each x value needs a corresponding y value, meaning there will be an equal amount of x and y values. We'll define our x-axis first and we'll call it months. And in this list, we need to type all 12 months. So I'll just paste this here. We then need a list for the y values and it needs to have the same amount of values that our x-axis axis list has. We can call this girls and I'll again paste my list here. Both lists have 12 items. The way this will be plotted is in January we had 8 girls reject me. In February it was 11. In March it was 13 and so on. We can actually already plot this data by typing the following. plt.plot. The first argument is months. Second argument is girls. The third argument is a keyword argument which is called color. We'll make it red. The marker is O and the line style is two dashes. This line will basically plot this first value on a graph as the x value and the second value as the y value. The color is the color of the line, the marker is what symbol you can put at each value on the graph, and then the line style is the way in which the line will be expressed. This is a quick list of some various symbols you can put instead of the ones that I used. If you don't pass anything in these two, then the line would look normal. Underneath here we just type plt.show, which will show the graph. If we now run this code, we can see that the graph has been plotted, but notice that if a random person looks at this for the first time, they won't have any idea what they're looking at because we haven't defined any labels for our graph. This number could mean anything. Is it the amount of restraining orders I got in 2013? Is it the amount of times I cried in the shower per month? Nobody would know and that's why labels are incredibly important. So back in our code we can write plt.xlabel and pass a string saying months into this parameter. This will label our x-axis as months. We can also label our y-axis the same way, just changing the x to a y and we'll call this one girls who rejected me. And then we can give our graph a title using the plt.title method or function, we'll call our graph amount of girls that rejected me in 2022. Also just keep in mind that this plt.show function needs to be at the bottom of our program, otherwise some of the other lines of code won't run. For example, if we added plt.show here, then these three lines won't run, and we'll get the graph that we got the first time we ran this program, the one without the labels. If we now execute the program, you'll see that we have labels for both our x and y axes, and the graph has a title. Nice work, you've created a simple line graph. But now now we'll add a few more features. You can see that our program has, by default, split our y-axis values into even numbers, excluding the odd numbers. The purpose of this is to make it more readable. If all numbers were here, it would look messy. Now, for the sake of the tutorial, let's say that matplotlib decided not to do this and decided to add the odd numbers here as well. Or let's say you want to change the y-axis values to a string as well, like the x-axis. Well, there's a way you can do this. For the sake of this tutorial, and this is important, we'll be pretending that matplotlib added the odd numbers as well, but that we only want to have even numbers. How do we do this? We first need a list of what we want the y-axis to display in the first place. We can call this y-ticks and set it to only the even numbers in our data. So this would be 6 all the way up to 20 because our lowest value is 6 and our highest is 20. Keep in mind that this list doesn't need to have 12 values like the previous one. We first of all need to store our graph in a variable. We can do this by typing plt.figure and then passing a tuple to a keyword parameter called 
called fig size. This is basically the width and height of the graph in inches. So we can say that we want it to be eight inches wide and six inches high. We can then store this figure in a variable called axis. And we can access this part of the figure by typing plt.subplot and passing three ones. This line of code becomes a bit more complex. So for the sake of the tutorial, I'll be excluding it in this tutorial. But for now, you just need to know that we can access our graph like this. And now we have a reference to it. I'll leave a link to the documentation in the description. Now that we have a reference to our current graph, we can use this axis variable to change certain properties of our graph. We can now say axis.set y ticks and pass y ticks. And this will change the left hand side y axis values to the ones we set here. You can experiment around with this and add only 6 and 20 and also only odd numbers. You can just experiment around. Running the code will give you the same result as last time. That's why I encourage you to play around with the y tick values and see what changes it makes to your graph. If you want to start using strings for your y tick values, you'll have to make use of set x or y tick labels. And you'll have to make sure that our y ticks list is the same length as the y tick labels list. Let's say that we want to compare two sets of data on the same graph. We can do this by creating another list for the y values and call it girls underscore friend. I'll then paste this list with data about the amount of girls that rejected my friend. Underneath here, we then just plot another set of data and change the y and axis values. It would also be helpful to change the color to clearly see the difference in the data. We can also add a legend by coming down here and typing plt.legend and passing a list with the names of each line. This list is in the order that these two lines are. So the first line here is the first item in our list and that would be me. And then the next one would be friend. We can also save this graph to our computer as an image by typing plt.savefig and passing a path of where we want to save the image as an argument. Remember to give a graph a name and type .png or .jpg at the end. If we now run our code, we'll see both me and my friend's data is plotted on the same graph. And that's it for this tutorial. You now know how to make some different types of line graphs. Thank you so much for watching the video. I really hope that you enjoyed. Please remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and also check out my other social media. I hope to see you next time.